the Taycan. You saw sales there surge in the last quarter, uh, now eclipsing what you did for the 911, which for the longest time, people like Joe have said, look, if I'm going to get a Porsche and I want the driving experience, I want the 911. Is that the way it's going to be from here on out? Do you think that we're starting to see the conversion where people, maybe they're not turning their backs on the 911 and the driving experience there, but they are saying, I want to go electric? Yeah, that's a that's an excellent question. At the end of the day, we are enjoying really high demand for all our vehicle lines. So it's both the 911 being in very, very high demand. Um, for instance, the GT3 is really in, in high demand, but on, at the same time, the Taycan as well. So, and the other vehicle lines also, the Cayenne is in high demand, the Macan is in high demand. Um, and yes, we are happy with the demand for the Taycan. It's uh, approximately 15% of our overall volume. But the important thing is the brand is strong. People enjoy the customer experience. And yes, we have a very strong product portfolio. Kel, where are the Taycan uh, buyers coming from? Are they per current Porsche owners or previous Porsche owners who have said, yes, I want an electric vehicle, so I'm going to go with the Taycan? Or are you bringing this in from people who might have also been looking to buy a Tesla and have said, hey, okay, I'm going to go electric, but instead of going with a Tesla, I'm going to look at the Taycan? Tell me where, paint a picture, if you could, where these buyers are coming from. That's a very good question um, because we want both. We want current Porsche owners to accept the Taycan as a part of the family so that they realize this is a Porsche. The way it is built, you know, we took a clean sheet of paper and said we're going to do electric. And if we do something, we do it right. We do it with our entire passion that, that we have. So people are coming both from the Porsche brand that they say, hey, you know, I'm owning a 911. I'm also going to buy a Taycan and accept this car. So that happens. But obviously, we as a brand also want to grow. So we are also bringing new people uh, to our brand. So we're also conquering from other brands. But what we also see is that people are just buying on top a vehicle in addition to what they have. So it's those three sources, both from the current uh, owners. They accept the Taycan. We are conquering, conquering. And some people just say, I need this car on top to what I already have in my garage. The, the, um, it's a beautiful car. I like it. And I stop whenever I see one. I've, seen, I've only seen a couple of them. There's one in my neighborhood I've seen. It's, it's a beautiful blue. It's kind of a, uh, a, it looks halfway between a 911 and a Panamera to me, which I think is really refined. And I think you did a great job on that. Uh, and I think that was the intention. But back to what Phil was talking about. It, w w it, was it hard? You would acknowledge it, it's hard to get a, uh, a 911 for the past year. It's been hard to get an allotment, or have my dealers been, been lying to me? It, is that, it, it, am I wrong to have one built? It's taken nine months to have one built, Cal. I mean, our philosophy is, is always, first of all, to make the customer happy. But um, we want, as a luxury brand, we always want to sell one car less, just one than the market demands. That is our philosophy, so that, that balance demand and supply. <laughs> and, and you you and, picked me for that? I, I feel, I, I feel kind of cool then. All right, it, never mind. Go ahead. It, it, at the moment, it's a bit more than just one less uh, because we have such a high demand for our products. And we are working hard, really, to, to bring those customers at the moment when they want to have it, to bring the cars to the customers. We are really working hard with production, with procurement to make uh, that happen. And uh, at the moment, it might be that you have to wait and dream about your 911 just a bit longer th than usually and then we would hope for. But rest assured, we're working really hard with production and procurement to bring the cars a bit uh, faster you... to you than at the moment. So okay. the dream phase is a little bit longer than the <laughs> enjoyment phase of sitting in the car, That's true. feeling it, smelling it, and just enjoying it overall. I'm happy with the one I have. It's just I had to extend that lease a little longer. That's fine. It's, it's no, no big deal. But it is weird that it's hard to get a standard now. You know, are, you, are you finally going to get rid of the standard transmission across the board? Because I had to go up to an S just to get a, a, a standard uh, seven-speed transmission. Are those going to be gone eventually and just have the, uh, I don't even know what those things are called. I don't really like them, but those uh, flapper things. Panels, yeah. Yeah, that brings us essentially to, to, to the, what, what you're mentioning is, is essentially our powertrain strategy. And, and um, I mean, we are 
fully hearted into electric vehicles, but we have three pillars that, that also in the future we will have. So it's gonna be full electric cars, we will have plug-in hybrids, powerful plug-in hybrids also. You maybe saw with the new Panamera, we even added a derivative, the 4S uh, e-hybrid. But we are also investing into internal combustion engines, just as you saw with the GT3. And again, if we do something, we do it right. Look at the GT3, and yes, those cars have a manual transmission. This, this physical experience of being able to shift yourself, it is something that our fans just enjoy, and that is also very much Porsche, especially, I mean, in a 911. So that, yes, that is, and we just launched it for the uh, GT3. So yes, it is something that we believe is important and we will have that as well in the future. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.